And we are live. Welcome back to On The King's Dime. It is Monday night, 14th of March. It's time to talk about another King's win. We've been on a pretty good run at the moment, so it's going to be good to get into that. We're going to talk Cairns, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this team and how they're, how they're shaping up for the playoffs because I think it's uh, we're in a pretty good spot, and we're going to talk about that, which is pretty good. Andy's here as always. Uh, g'day, g'day. But as always, yeah, like, share, and subscribe. We're currently live on Facebook right now. Uh, we put these up in audio format on Apple Podcasts, on Google Podcasts, and also on Spotify and the Anchor platform. So if you want to listen to us in audio format, definitely go and check those out and like, and subscribe, and give us a rating and review. Do all that. Uh, and also on YouTube, I put these up. I've been uh, premiering them. Um, for funsies in the afternoon. So if you want to watch it next day in the afternoon live, like it was live, then get over there and do that on the YouTube channel. It's always uh, it's always fun seeing that pop up on my YouTube. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's going it's going great. Hopefully the audio. If shout out if the audio is we've been having some audio issues, but I think I've cleaned them up. I was going to do a test stream uh, on the weekend, but I never got around to it. So hopefully out there the audio. Should we just do a quick check? I'll just I'll just do a quick check. You just. Tell us your thoughts on this Cairns game while I just do a quick check of the audio. Um, this Taipans team is an interesting makeup. Um, watching these games in kind of a back to back sequence, obviously without Xavier Pulse this week, is that they really have a lack of, you know, creative shot makers. It's kind of apparent that they get really, you, you can essentially just camp in the paint and they either have to poke up a low percentage three-point shot or try and get these weird running mid-range floaters that don't really work because they're really all very lanky. So it's, it's a weird it's a weird constructed team. Machado is not really, you know, he's kind of a B-grade point guard in this league. I don't, I don't rate him. Um, it's, uh, it's, yeah, I don't know. I think Adam Ford had a pretty tough ask to put this team together. It's, it's, it's a bit doggy doo-doo to be completely honest with you. Zimmerman is, is just too predictable as a big. He has no footwork. It's all just like Plumlee style setting screens into more traffic. It, it doesn't work for my mind. I don't know if, if that's, um, you know, Yannick that's... Wetzel, can, he's got a bit of foot, footwork around the rim. Zimmerman just kind of stands there and just has nothing. And I was just like, oh, okay. It's, he's a decent big and there's some good bigs in the league and we've seen some good bigs in this league. But that team, man, like I couldn't help but watch those two games and just go, that was like us last year. Like no spacing, no movement, no collapsing, yeah. no guys running off screens, no one running off ball at all, nobody moving basically. Like you contrast it to our, our team at the moment. How many times did you see two guys cross, the dribbler, the ball handler, someone setting a screen, those two guys cross, and then two guys cross back again off the ball? And you just straight away, like, Cairns were just sent into a spin every time we did that. Like, we're doing that with Adams. He was penetrating. Um, JaVale had come out. And then whoever was the off card was either DJ or Glover at times. Um, Makers was, you know, we'll get into him. But, like, those two guys had crossed as well. And Cairns, like, were trying to switch. They had no idea what they were doing defensively at the start of that game. And... Yeah, I just couldn't help watching it, just going, man, that was us last year. That was this Sydney team, man, last year. And it is 100%. It's a weird, weird team. I think they've got some decent players. I like Majok Deng. Um, Machado, just, he just so sooky and salty, man. I can't get over the fact that he just, anytime he misses a shot, he'll just have a sook about it. And then you just go, man, like how good is it to have a point guard who, He'll, he'll miss a shot and then just go, okay, okay, fair enough. Um, fair enough. I'll, I'll have another crack at it. Like, it was good to see that sort of happen. But, yeah, I just couldn't couldn't get over it the whole time I wanted to send you a text. And you're just like, it's just like watching us. This is so bizarre from last year far, far out. But I, I don't know. Like, I, I look at to, to start this off basically talking about the type ends. You know, this is a King's Kings uh, podcast and we're, we're kind of talking a little bit about our uh, old coach, but essentially, god damn, Vic Law just sent this game into overtime. Um, if you're watching at home, uh, the Perth game. But if you look at this this Taipans team, like it does the same things. Like I don't know, like how do you like do you bring in new personnel? Do you fix different certain things? Like I don't know how you fix that when fundamentally I'm seeing the same things as we saw last year in that team. And just going, is it forty? Like is he just? No, no, it's available talent for man. You can see that that team is not. 
not well constructed. They have no shooters. Like we 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 were like you know we have ink drill, um and 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 uh, Jalen Adams. You've got three shot makers that can shoot from the mid range and the three point land, and that in in is why Perth and this is why Melbourne has been so successful over the years. Is they've always had shot makers. Last year we had no shot makers. It was Shawnee Bruce taking the majority of the the shots because Casper Webb fell off like you know a, a deep cliff. And you know you have Cooks who who's gotten better, but he's only one man. You know you can just clog the paint if it's Cooks. Great if everyone's playing, uh, but not really great if no one else can shoot the ball. Because again they'll just do a Zimmerman and clog the paint, and it was that's his night. That's the night over. So. Um, it's it's when you have three guys out there that you know you have to give respect to from anywhere on the on the field. You you leave a lot open and you leave a lot of shorts and guys, you know, getting to getting to their spots. Um, Cairns has none of that, really. Like you know, if you go out there and you're like, well, Machado's not really a good shot creator. He can kind of get into lanes and you know maybe hit a three. McCall, they just dared him to shoot the whole time, and that was it. Like, that was the extent. Like, Magic Dan was good on the runner, good around the rim, good player, but that was the extent of their, you know, upwards when they're taking these weird 12 foot jumps that just don't work, you know. It's like watching a team of makers, it just didn't work. Um, I don't know if that's 40, I don't know if that's like, that's just not a well constructed team. Just like that Sydney team was not a well constructed team last year. Yeah. Had some spirit, you know, it got some wins out in the end, but not a well constructed team. So, I don't know if that's, you know, um, if that's the, you know, the small market ability of the team to attract big overseas talent. Because uh, let's be real, Ian Clark and Jalen Adams are big overseas talent in this league. So if we can't attract big overseas talent, you're kind of, you know, left with what you have. And, you know, to Forty's credit, you, they put up a decent game. They're not complete pushovers, but this team was never going to do anything. And it's kind of a bit sad from the... The, the Cairns team of three or four seasons ago with Space Camp for the season, Kuat Noy coming, coming out and his, his opening league, you know, it was a fun team to watch. Yeah, Heaps it was a good, good team. team. That's, they're just falling in a hole, haven't they? They've just fallen in a hole of recruitment, I think. And it, it, you, Two bad pieces. And there's your season done, really, when you think about it. McCall's a bad piece for that team. It doesn't make sense. Hmm. Um Machado is okay, but you have to put the right people around him. You need a second shot creator. You need a second or fourth shot creator. None of that in that team. So, yeah, that 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 would be. That's kind of my take on on this Cairns team. You know, not maybe not Ford's fault. Maybe that's something they do in the season. If he's got a couple of seasons there to, to kind of deal with that, maybe that was all one before he came on board. But, but yeah, just a couple of bad pieces. There goes there goes your season. The same as Sydney last year. A couple of bad pieces. There goes your season. Yeah, we had a lot of injuries too, right? But yeah, fundamentally, I, I couldn't help but just sit there and go, wow, like we're, we're doing the same thing off ball. Like to hear McCall would operate really well in space, but there's just no space. And, and the amount of times like just Zimmerman was one-on-one with people and you're just going, why are you letting him play one-on-one against Terrell? Like all these guys, Jalen Adams by the sort of third quarter was just like, oh, all I do is just drive. And I know I've got either DJ in the corner or DJ um, up at 11 o'clock or I've got like a lob to Jarrell and he was just having an absolute field day. And how many times did he just off a dribble, dribble past someone and then just realize, oh, wow, I've got like a step and a half on this guy and – he could either finish or like a couple of times, like you could tell he was just like, oh, I didn't realize like, you know, I had a step and a half on this guy. Should I finish it? And, uh, and then kind of like second guessed himself a little bit. But the uh, the talent gap, yeah, you're right. It's completely, completely uh, different when you're sort of looking at those guys like McCall. Cool, you know, played all right. He was the only one that anytime you go, oh, he's catch and shoot, you're just looking at him just going, okay, he's probably going to knock this down. But no, no, none of the other players, you're sitting there going like, oh, no, like, oh, no, he's going to get the ball. You know, Nate Jarway's coming back from injury. I felt like he probably could have done more or maybe, you know, he just on limited minutes, but minus 16, we kind of rinsed him a little bit. Um, but at the same time, like they just didn't even throw the ball into him and it's just the spacing was all over the place. Yeah, it's a, just a rough team at the moment, but it was good for us to get a couple of wins, just go bang, bang. Um, Adams, again, fantastic. Uh, Maker, let's talk about the Makers because I was so surprised that 
<laughs> McCurr, is it McCurr? I just got to click it again. Yeah, McCurr maker started. Obviously, with Cooks being out injured, did you get any feeling of like, oh no, Cooks is out? Like, ooh, this could be a tough game. Not really. We've just got too many good guards. That's the problem, right? You, you, when you think of DJ, is kind of your third string guard, or like a weird, this weird small ball that has three plays, two guard and guard plays, small forward. Yeah, you just think that the, these guys are going to run. Cairns, Cairns had to take it to Sydney offensively and somehow exploit them, and they can't do that with Zimmerman on the floor in a small ball lineup, realistically. They should have played like a, a third guard kind of thing and just gone to Madrock Den as a power forward center hybrid and just run the whole game because Zimmerman has no skills from three feet, greater than three feet. Like I've seen this, I saw this for three seasons at the 76ers. Like just, <laughs> no, let's just sit in the paint and let's see what he does. We, it's we, nothing. We had it with Dane Pinot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just like, it's just, you know, what does he do? Not much. Okay. So that's um, yeah, the guy's young, and that's that's fine. But it's a one-dimensional game, and one-dimensional games are not good enough this league anymore. Five, six seasons ago, yeah, this one-dimensional play would get you, you know, a couple of baskets. But the teams have gotten onto the field now; they just sat off them, and then mm. you're creating a choked-up lane where no one can drive, and it's just these kind of twelve-four floaters or bad jump shots outside. Um, and guards kind of, you know, perusing the perimeter. So, yeah. It's, not, it's not fascinating, unfair. like, how many people will just take shots this year. And that's one thing I've noticed watching some of these games is just like, oh, I'll, I'll take a shot. And then they just take a shot and it's a bad shot. And you just go, well, okay. Like, um, I've noticed that we will move the ball a little bit better sometimes too. Like if we're not getting good shots, we'll move the ball, start moving the ball around, you know, go high, low, run some screen action, a little off ball here and there. And that's something we were missing last year and a couple of years ago. Um, and then again, that pace is kind of helping us out a little bit, but we've just got so much depth, like defensively, you know, Wani and then Bruce off the bench, Angus Glover came in and hit, knocked down a couple of shots. Um, still defensively, he looks a little like he can get rinsed a little bit, but still he's coming back from a big injury. Tommy V coming off the bench and just taking a couple of shots, knocking down some big ones. Um, he looks a little bit overweight, uh, just just quietly, but um, he's not getting that much game time. Really, only ten minutes in this game. He's not really being relied upon. It's just mainly our stars, essentially, are keeping those guys out of the team, which is you know where you want those guys off the bench. Ten minutes a night, yeah. you know, Glover playing twenty three. Brucey didn't score, and he he had nineteen minutes. But again, he comes out, he glues everything together, and it's the uh, second unit together effectively. And you know, and that's that's a huge part of it. But yeah, let's touch on Ian Clark. What a just what a pickup. You said it like as soon as we signed him, you said he was going to be a great pickup. And just wow, I can't believe how like much better athletically. He was doing the same thing as Jalen Adams, where it's just like, really? Off of one dribble, I'm this far away from the guy that's trailing? Like, okay, sure thing. And um, a few running floaters. Um, and then knocking down those threes, like the step back, the off the dribble threes. That's the other thing too. Like, is not not that many people in the NBL can just create off the dribble for themselves. And I feel like Adams, <laughs> Adams, and Ian Clark have come in and just from the NBA and gone. Oh right, like I just create off the dribble here, and there's like five feet of space. Like this is great. Like how good is this? And when they're going down, it's great. Um, you know, if they're not going down, it's obviously where we're going to struggle. But it's just amazing, man. Like, it's such a good pickup. And defensively, on ball, like, he still has a couple of, like, silly fouls, but they're the, like, I'm hustling a lot and I'm making things happen and I'm getting up in your face. Yeah. And, yeah, okay, I'm giving away a couple of fouls here and there, but at the same time, oh, yeah, I still can't believe how good on ball. he He's just fine. You can tell he's, like, into himself at the moment as well because he it just looks really easy for him. And to, to circle back to, yeah, the makers, I, I was so surprised, like, McCur maker just, like, like, dribbling up the floor. <laughs> And then taking bad jumpers, yeah. and you're just going like, "What? What are you doing? Like, you're like, you clearly like, like angling for some more game time, and you know, is is that the way to do it in this kind of uh, this setup? But with Cooks out, you know, it's always it's always warranted, I guess. Um, he had one of seven on the night, one of two from three, oh, or five from two. So not not taking anything around the rim. I still would, yeah, like them to or like McCur at least to just kind of go, you know what? I'm going to block shots around the rim, grab ten boards. It was important. A um, couple yeah. of turnovers, but 
all in all, yeah, and to circle all the way back, I wasn't all that worried about Cooks either. Like, I kind of went, yeah, it's this tight ends. If this was a big game, yeah, right, I'd be pretty worried to having Cooks out. But the other thing too is the forwards, the amount of forwards we have. Like, they're coming out of everywhere. They're coming out of the goddamn walls. Like, forwards and guards for days. It's it's fantastic. And uh, Ethel sort of saying, "Where's why is uh, Wiley not getting minutes? But Wiley Bales, I assume, that is. He's coming back from injury. He's... It's also it's all he's also on a you know a, a, what do you call it a rookie deal not even mm. he's not even in a fully fledged contract yet so I mean he's, it's yeah, important yeah. that he plays and he's a good player but I think that you know I think Buford can smell blood in the water and I'm just like okay we can push this to the top right mm. and you may say you may see him getting some game time minutes down the stretch but I mean it's pretty tight. And his rotations are tight at the moment. And, you know, Tommy V's not getting minutes when Crooks is on the floor. It's They're not huge rotations. So, um, yeah, I, I, I just think that it's just like, okay, he's still got to do a bit more cooking. He's coming back off injury. Maybe he hasn't picked up enough in training. We don't see what happens week to week uh, in training. So maybe Buford doesn't like something that's there. Hmm. And, you know, but you, you, you can't put him on. And and Bruce plays that pivotal role that he's just getting the ball to Jarrell in that in that kind of second unit when Jarrell plays, it's getting the ball to Jarrell, it's getting the ball to Glover and DJ, and so you, you kind of don't need a scorer for those ten minutes on the floor. We haven't we haven't really needed a, a like a third scoring guard option because we've already got three. So we haven't even needed a fourth. You've got DJ, you've got Ian Clark, and you've got Jalen Adams. So I just he's not really warranted in this lineup per se. I don't think anyway. And I think it's important too with him coming off injury that you know, we can nurse him back. We don't need to like shove him in. And the you can't underestimate the fact that Ian Clark is now you know, if Ian Clark wasn't there and RJ was like was there, then like Bales probably wouldn't get, be getting minutes anyway. Um, if he Ian Clark wasn't there, then Bales would probably getting be getting those minutes. Um, but I think the the showing he had last week was a little bit like ropey and out of control. He loves to just try and score the ball too, which is you know it's important in in some aspects and important in some parts of a, a role in, on a team. Um, but at the same time, like he, he's got plenty of time to grow into that, and I think yeah, the way this team's cooking, it's it's this run might go on a little bit uh, a little bit longer yet. We're going to have a quick chat about that now because the uh, rounds have now been announced. We're playing Phoenix next week uh, yeah. on Saturday, and yeah. that's you know, I guess at once at one point or so, at some point or another, our whole yeah yeah yeah, we got the Phoenix on toast is going to come back and bite us. I think there was a run like really early on where I think we beat them twice or maybe even three or four times. And then there was just one random win that they beat us and everyone's like, oh, no, they beat us. Um, so I, I think that might be coming. But at the same time, I think this team's kind of got enough weapons to throw at a team like the Phoenix. Um, but with the way Xia is playing, he um, had a pretty good game against Melbourne and Melbourne kind of got out of jail in that game. So it'll be interesting to see how this team deals with him. We've got a, ni- we've got a nice collection of... Uh, bigs to throw at him and or a guy like him and unique bigs not just i'm going to go against you like not the the jordan hunter versus froling type stuff that was going on last year where it's just like wow two really slow bigs duking it out really interesting um but then to go in around 17 we then play perth that's a huge game we've beaten them twice already it'd be nice nice to get a sweep perth are kind of firing at the moment uh, and then the Jack Jumpers, everyone's favorite spoiler team this season, just seem to pick up wins from nowhere. And then a game against Adelaide, uh, the Hawks, and then the Adelaide 36ers again, then the Taipans, and then the Hawks. So it's it's a f- not 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 a run that's you know got large games in it like lo- there's a lot of huge games it's not a like murderous row of games so uh, there's a huge chance that man like you're looking at the table i've just i had the table up on my other screen but i had to move it over the other side yeah, it was 12 and 7 currently sitting in third there's a pretty good chance you know we might finish the season I, I don't like to say wins but there's a chance that we might finish with nine losses or ten losses which is going to be huge right because that pretty much eliminates the bullets 36s and the breakers from finishing ahead of us and then you know out of those teams the jack jumpers the hawks the phoenix that are below us 
you probably could say the the Jack Jumpers probably won't be there, um, and then the Phoenix and the War the Hawks have been a little bit near yeah, here and there, here and there. Um, and then we play those guys, so we have chances now to go right. We're playing you. We'll duke it out. We'll take those points, and they, they those become big games. So yeah. it's kind of in our hands. I like this. I like where we're sitting. It is in our hands. So I think that's the most. Yeah, you, we've got enough games against the Lord and Phoenix to knock them out. Really, Jack Jumpers team is very strange. Very it's, strange. It's a weird team, man. It's. We say it a lot. We say, man, that's a weird team, man. Like anything, any, any team that's under us, we sort of say is a weird team. But it is such an unusual team. Like how badly Adams and um, who's their other guard? What's his name? Get McGetty was playing at the start of the season. Like it was rough, man. Like, and they were losing games, scoring like 60, 70 points. You know, not a firing offense. Now all of a sudden they're like, "Ooh, we've got a de- they've got a decent offense." It's like, "Wow, where did where did this come from?" Type of thing. But um, I'd like to think, you know, we're going to win pretty handily against them. Like, I'd like to think we're not going to lose a game against them. Um, just looking at the ladder now as it is live with the game that's just happened. Yeah, we're still sitting in third, one game back from Perth. Looking at the points percentage, I noticed somebody sort of said, like, why didn't we get, you know, why didn't we make this a blowout and let our points percentage, you know, get up? And I, I was kind of thinking that the same thing as well at the time. But then I just went, you know what? Like, I want to see this team just, like, sort some things out on the fly. Like, I was happy to kind of go, you know, throw some weird lineups out there. Throw throw a dude out there, a maker, an extra maker for us. Um, would have been, yeah, would have been good to get Bales some, a few minutes. But at the same time, like, I feel like we're in this zone where we can experiment a little bit more and just go, whatever, man. Like, the po- the points percentage would be great, but a little bit of experimentation also is important with the way this team's kind of shaped up through this year. Yeah. It's um, it's a good lineup if we can get these makers involved a bit more um, and get them being less sausage. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we need, we need them less sausage. They've both had injuries, point. though, haven't they? Yeah, but they're both just, they're just sometimes they just have like sausage decision making. And I don't know if it's just them being to be a bit freer because they're taking things. But there is some sausaging around. I just don't. <laughs> sausage. Explain know. sausaging. Just like, I'm going to dribble up and then I'm not. And then I'm going to shoot the ball and it's just a break. Just like you're shooting twenty percent of the only half the season, this is not statistically a very good idea. Mm. You know, you're not you're not gonna shoot your way out of like a slump here because you shouldn't have the ball like too much. So just just, you know, maybe get someone else involved, set a screen, get there for the easy lob, get your confidence. Get to the line even, you know, get to the line house, you know, and, you know, do some things but it's not they do tend to get their pockets picked pretty easily as well. Which is yeah, annoying. that was the one I was going to mention is um, like dribbling the ball and around the basket. Um, you know, it, it really highlights how good Cooks and Jarrell really are at catching the ball in these tight situations mm-hmm. around the basket um, when they kind of get their pockets picked a little bit. Um, but at the same time, they're very young, right? And <laughs> I guess we're not losing, so they can dribble up. <laughs> And just shoot bricks if they want to. Like, so I I don't know. Like uh, this, like McCurmaker, I I want to see get around the rim a bit more. Like battle a little bit more. He feels a little bit like I uh, you know I don't want to um play around the rim. And you kind of go, but you're seven feet. Like how about you just get around the rim? Like you're clearly bigger yeah. and stronger than some of these dudes here. Like why don't you start monstering them? So over the next few weeks, it'll be. I think it's going to be pretty interesting to see how that kind of develops, especially with Cooks coming back. Um, into the team he's obviously the main the main forward in this team who pretty much everything kind of revolves around um he's kind of little off ball and the way he plays so you know his importance i hope he's not out i didn't see many um many like reports of how long he's out for but hopefully he's not out for too long um but at the same time we're just throwing sausages like you say at things like just keep them coming another seven footer another seven footer keep it coming like big dudes for days and small dudes for days um which is great uh let's let's move along to our three two one i was almost going to go to tipping but three two one in this game uh it was jalen three yeah jalen again block two Yep, Clark for two for me. Jarrell. 
I'm going to go DJ for one for me. I thought he played quite well. Um, and then, yeah, finally a game where Cooks doesn't get any points. So bad luck, Cooks. E. Spoiler alert, he's still leading handily in this 3-2-1 uh, MVP race. Uh, let's go to tipping. I just got rid of the screen because I'm an idiot. Let me just get that back up. Tipping, tipping has been, man, it's hotting up the comp. Like, yeah, like nobody's safe here. Like we're getting wins, losses. Like it's just a mixed bag. This round was an absolute mixed bag. And in the end, um, just looking at next week's fixtures here, starting off with, come on, starting off with the Hawks at home to Southeast Melbourne. Oh, huge, huge. Hawks. Huge game, man. In the grand scheme of things, I'm going Phoenix. I feel like she's about to explode all over, uh, all over Sam Froling and the, the other Froling. 36ers are at home to the types. Man, what is going on with the 36ers? Um, just rubbish. Uh, I will go 36 in this game. Though. Same. The um, Mitch McCarron, man, he must have got a massive payday because eh? he looks like he just does not give a toss over there. He's just like, this team sucks. I'm not going to play hard at all. Uh, Taz, Tazzy Jack Jumpers at home to the Hawks. Um. A little, Jack Jumpers. A little Thursday, Saturday special for the Hawks. I'm going Hawks. Yeah. They'll bounce back. You got Jack Jumpers. Uh, Southeast Melbourne and the Kings. Huge game. Hawks. Kings also. That's actually in um, Melbourne and with Phoenix coming off Thursday, Saturday too, which is pretty massive for us. Um, kind of tips the odds in our favor a little bit more. Melbourne United are playing Adelaide 36ers. United. Yeah, United. Yeah. Yep. You dropped. You saw that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Bullets are playing the Taipans. Bullets. Bullets. Bullocks. Bullets to me. And then the Perth Wildcats finished the round with another game against the Breakers. Mm, could be a good one. I'm going to have to get the Breakers. Yeah, you need points. Uh, I'm going Perth, so, yeah, to round that out. And, yeah, I think that might be uh, that might be it. Another short, succinct one. The times are good. When the times are good, there's nothing to whinge about, you know. It's good. So we're just watching game after game of great basketball, and I think, you know, I think we've really turned it around. And for what we were at the start of the season, it was like, I don't know about this. And then now it's like, ooh, you know, that, it's like that, that meme where it's like, and then it's like, ooh. You know, which is good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, hopefully we can go on a little bit longer with uh with uh, the stretch that's that's coming up. Uh, and always as always, you can we are live right now. You can subscribe to us or like us on Facebook, uh, and you can listen to these in replay in audio format on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and the Anchor platform. And on YouTube, I'll cut this into a premiere tomorrow so you can watch this again in replay at 4 o'clock tomorrow, 4 or 5 o'clock-ish, you know, when you're coming home from work or something like that. Throw us on there if you want to watch this in replay. Uh, yeah, and give us a, a shout-out, like, rating, review, subscribe. And as always, we will see you guys next time. The King's Island.